Welcome to today's story, On His Way Home. It's a story about a man and his friend taking the subway to a particular destination. If you have any ideas for stories you would like me to write, leave them in the comments below. Here we go. We were in the subway car between where we were and where we were going. I don't even know what the stops are called, but I won't forget what happened when the good guys finally stood up for what was right. Henry loved to talk and I loved to listen, so it seemed we were a match. See my battle damaged chest plate, Oliver? He pointed to the broken gray circle secured to his chest. I found it while fighting the pandemonium gang. They kept on shooting me, but the bullets just bounced off and hit him back. I looked at it closely. There were no bullet marks. Perhaps I was just missing them. So I looked at Henry and cocked my head to the side. Of course the part they hit broke off. I, I had to get it reforged. There's still a blacksmith around Hart Street that can do it, he said. That would certainly explain it. I hoped he could get it fixed soon so we could continue fighting pandemonium and all the other criminals in the city. Laying next to him was a drawing and a book made in red crayon of what appeared to be a robot. On top of the book were two action figures. Henry noticed I was looking at the action figures and picked them up. This is Boba Fett and Wolverine. Wolverine's in the X-Men. They fight bad guys like Boba Fett. Boba Fett lost his arm fighting Wolverine. The good guys always win. I bet you want to be a good guy too. I tapped Wolverine on the head. Yeah, I knew you were a good guy, Oliver, Henry said. The orange lights of the city flew past the window of the subway car. A golden age was passing us by. Henry tapped his black helmet with Boba Fett. This is my super helmet. It has the Triforce of Wisdom in it, so I always do the right thing. It lets me think fast and take the strongest blow without stopping. On the top were air holes, probably to let all the heat out. Attached to either side of his super helmet was a sturdy brown wood material with what looked to be little wings covering the sides of his head. I wondered if they let him fly. For the first time since my mother left me, I felt safe. No matter how scared or little I felt, Henry would be there to protect me and everybody else in the city. The rest of my body armor was created in a secret lab under the city, Henry said. On both of his shoulders, he had more of the brown wood material, but these had pieces of strong metal on them. On the metal pieces was written cola. His legs had the same material, no metal, but one piece had fragile written in big letters. The subway car slowed down and came to a stop. Henry didn't get up, so I didn't either. I didn't want to be alone. The doors opened and a group of men wearing magenta colored jackets walked in. They were in the pandemonium gang. Without thinking, I jumped into my seat and pretended to sleep. When pandemonium was around, you don't look at them or acknowledge them. You just hope they pass on by. My eyes closed. I heard them walk over to us and then stop in front of Henry and myself. My heart was beating as fast as it could beat. Take a look at this, one of them, I assume the leader said. <laughs> what are you supposed to be? I'm a superhero. And I beat up bad guys like you, replied Henry. The leader laughed. Oh, now I see it. I bet those green shoes let you run real fast. Let me guess, your name's Paladin Boy. That's right. I fight with her what's right. You know what? I like you, old man. Let me give you a present. I heard a lighter start up. Let me just give you this cigarette, the leader said. For a minute, I was worried they would attack, but once again, Henry had saved the day. A moment later, Henry screamed. Enjoy your cigarette, said the leader of the group. I waited until they walked off, and I heard the door at the end of the subway car open and close. Once they left the car, I opened my eyes and jumped to Henry's lap. It was covered in blood coming down from his chest. Our eyes met, his full of fear. Something I had never seen before. He reached behind my head and stroked my fur. 
the blood on his hands soaked into my hair, and then he stopped moving. This was just like how my mother left me. Somebody that I didn't care hit her with their car. I stayed by her side, but nobody came to help, and then I was alone. I didn't want to be alone again. Henry and I found each other. He was alone just like me. I couldn't leave him. I curled up in his lap and purred. He needed to know somebody loved him. <laughs>